In this video will give you an overview of the calculus approach to handling kinematic functions. This is meant for students who are already familiar with basic polynomial derivation and integration. Let's start with the position vector. It gives you the location of an object of interest at a certain time. This can be constant for stationary objects, but it can change over time for moving objects. We will designate this as x parenthesis t for position function of time. Velocity is defined as the rate of change of position with time. Mathematically, this will be written as v of t is equal to the time derivative of the position function. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity with time. Mathematically, this will be written as a of t is equal to the time derivative of the velocity function. Here is the simplest of position functions. We already have encountered this when we derived it algebraically for constant acceleration. Note that only in this quadratic form of the position function is the acceleration constant. When we take the time derivative of this to get our velocity function, we arrive at yet another familiar equation. v of t is equal to v naught plus a times t. Finally, acceleration can be found as the derivative of this velocity function, provided that acceleration is constant, you will end up with a alone. Notice that at each derivative step, the initial value of the previous function dropped out, i.e. the velocity will not depend on where the initial position was, and the acceleration will not depend on what the initial velocity was. We can integrate back 
from the acceleration function by taking the antiderivative to get the velocity function. To get the position function, we take the antiderivative again. Once again, let's take the simplest example. We will start with the acceleration function being the constant a. When we integrate this function between some arbitrary starting time and t, we get a times t plus some constant. However, recognize that that constant must be the value of the velocity at t naught, i.e. it is the initial velocity. Take another integral to get the position function. And once again, we need to add a constant at the end. Again, recognize that that constant must have the value of the position function at time equals zero. Hence, that is our initial position. Now let's consider position functions that don't abide by strict quadratic form. In this case, it is non-constant acceleration. The derivative relations amongst the kinematic quantities still hold. The velocity is still the time derivative of the position function. Acceleration is still the time derivative of the velocity function. Note, as the derivatives reveal, the symbolic constants a, b, and c no longer necessarily correspond to the initial values. In this example, only a is the initial position. However, if you plug in zero for time in the velocity or acceleration functions, you're not going to get an expression that involves B or C. A, B, and C may also have changed units as they no longer necessarily correspond to standard quantities. When in doubt, check that when you plug in time, how the coefficient should multiply to get the given quantity. In this example, with these units, if you multiply them by the time functions, you will get the correct result of meters. A final warning about the use of definitions.
To calculate average velocity, it is defined as the change in position over change in time. Even when dealing with non-constant acceleration, you will still be plugging into the position functions first before dividing by time. The same thing goes for calculating average acceleration. To calculate average acceleration, you first need to know the velocity function with time, plug into it for both times before dividing by the total time. In summary, no matter how non-standard your motion functions are, use the definitions to navigate between them.